Luke chapter 15, verse 8. Or what woman having ten pieces of silver. If she lose one piece, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek, here's the word, diligently till she find it. And when she has found it, she calls all her friends Amen. and her neighbors together saying, rejoice with me. All right. Yeah, she's happy. Rejoice with me. Girl, why you calling me talking about rejoice with you? For I have found the coin, that's why, which I had lost. Verse 10, likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of Yahuwah over one sinner All right. that repents. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the lost coin. Right. You may be seated. The lost coin. The lost coin. The Bible says either what woman or what woman you know having ten pieces of silver, ten silver coins. Amongst the Hebrews that lived in Jerusalem and Palestine and that area, the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. the land that our Heavenly Father, Yah, gave us mm -hmm. as an inheritance. We had certain customs back then. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the customs was that during a wedding, yes. uh, the bride, uh, they didn't have wedding rings like, like we have today. Now, I know y'all look and say, well, Pastor, where's your ring? Uh, my ring's too small, and my hand keeps swelling, and my finger be hurting, so it swells up, my finger be hurting, I take it off, then it shrink, I put it back on, it want to fall off. I, gotta, I don't know what is going on here. And so, when I said wedding ring, I'm still married now. Amen. But my ring be hurting my finger. That's just a problem I got. Anyway. <laughs> but the ring is not in every culture. You do know that. Some cultures have other ways of showing that they're married. Mm -hmm. And in this case, the Hebrews, the woman would receive a headdress. Mm -hmm. And what they would do, they would, they would actually sew or stitch into the headdress or put into the headdress what's called a drachma. Mm -hmm. um, and each coin represented about a day's wages. All right, all right. All right, so I'm just going to estimate because I don't know how much they made a day back then. But but let's just say um, they made $100 a day. So each coin is worth $100. And they're in her headdress, which means she's got $1,000 worth of coin in her, in her headdress. It's important to understand something that the drachma also will represent a savings. Mm -hmm. By giving the person money for their wedding, uh, it often helped the couple if they ever fell into what's called hard times. All right, all right. Amen. It's not only for decoration, but it was also useful mm -hmm. in the time of need. And in the text, this woman apparently found herself in a time of need. She found herself in a crisis. She found herself having to go to her headdress, her, her wedding gift, in order to get the coin, 
her coins in order to pay some type of bill. It was hard time. She might have been trying to buy some food. She could have been trying to keep her mortgage paid. We don't know what the problem was, but we do know she was in a crisis or she would not have been really looking for her coins. Amen. And as she was looking for her coins, she noticed something. There was only nine. She lost one. Now somebody said, well, that ain't no big deal. Well, every little bit counts. Yeah. In a time of crisis. Mm -hmm. Who do I know that? You know, when, 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 you, when everything is going well, you don't have to worry about money. If you got money, you got money stuck in the top drawer, the bottom drawer. You got a little money, you know, in the kitchen. You got some in between the couch covers. Somebody help me in here. You got some in your ashtray in the car. And, and you know, you just got spare change. But wait a minute. Let a crisis come. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you say, I know I had some money in this piggy bank. Right. Or I know I had so much money in this drawer. I know I did. And you go to get it and some of it's missing. All right. come on. What happens is you, you basically look at the nine that you have, be like, okay, that's secure, but now all of your attention, are y'all still in here with me? Yeah, yeah. All of your attention now is on that one lost coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because in times of trouble, mm -hmm. in hard times, mm -hmm. every little counts. Yeah. And a coin I don't care how much it's worth. Mm -hmm. If it's lost, mm -hmm. it don't count. That's right. That's right. The coin was silver. Silver in this country today is still legal tender. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's lost. Mm -hmm. It bears the mark of the king, just like our coins bear the mark. And the images of our past presidents. Yes, yes. But in its lost condition, mm -hmm. whether it's silver or gold or whatever, coins are worthless while lost. Yes. They only are worthwhile when they are found. Mm -hmm. Now here's an interesting thing about this parable. She lost her coin in the house, in, inside of her own house. It was lost. But the good news is it was lost in the house. Yeah. yeah. See, it was lost, but it was still in the house. Uh, yeah. It, it could have been lost at the marketplace. Amen. And that would have been all bad news. It, it could have been lost at a relative's house or at a relative's in another city. That would have been all bad news. But there is some good news. That coin she knew was lost in her house. Yeah. Now the houses of Palestine were dark. Mm -hmm. Not like today. Because we've got, you know, glass everywhere and we've got all kind of electricity in our homes today that keep our houses lit. But in those days, they only had a little circular window about 18 inches in diameter. And the floors of most homes, especially those of the commoner, were really floors of beaten earth. And then they would cover the floor with dried reeds and rushes. So to look for a coin on a floor like that will almost be like looking for a needle in a haystack. And I started looking at this picture. Here a woman has a coin, has a headdress. She needs the money. She needs all ten. She's only got nine. She lost it in the house. But when she looked down on the floor, it's like, oh my goodness, this is impossible. 
But I saw something else. See, the earth and the coin has something in common. Silver comes from the ground. Yes, yes. And the only difference between just raw dirt mm -hmm. and the silver coin was that at one point somebody dug into that raw dirt on, until come they on. found some ore. Come on, come on. Got it in their hand, took it to some type of silversmith or someplace in order to melt it down and watch this, take something that was worthless, just uh -huh. dirt, and turn it into something that has great worth, which is silver. Yeah, yeah. Silver may start out in the dirt, mm -hmm. but once it's been put into the hands of a silversmith and minted yeah. and given the mark of royalty, it becomes valuable. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The coin may have come from the dirt, but it didn't belong in the dirt no more. I thought about this. Unlike sheep, whose natural tendency is to wander, that's the first parable. This coin didn't wander. This, this coin dropped, fell on the ground, and the dust accumulated on it. So let's talk about how she found it. Number one, she lit a lamp. She knew if she was going to find her coin, she was going to need a lamp, a candle, a, some light in the house. And light in the Bible always represents truth and holiness. Yes, Keep yes. that in your mind. Yes, yes. Truth and holiness is represented as light. Number two, she swept the house. Mm -hmm. Now the idea of sweeping the house involves some labor, yes, yes. involves some work. Yes, yes. The first thing she did was light a light, yes. lit up the house, and when she lit the house, she noticed, whoo, this house ain't kept up as good as I thought it was. Mm -hmm. Just like a lot of our houses, certain rooms is kind of dark and we don't pay no attention to them. Until one day we have to go in there to get something and we turn the light on and we've been in, we ain't been there so long. We're like, woo, I need to do some cleaning. Yeah, yeah. That's what she did. She turned the light on and saw her condition of her home and said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I got to bring out the broom mm -hmm. and I'm going to sweep this house. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said that she searched diligently, mm -hmm. which means she worked and worked and worked, she did not give up until she found her coin. Amen. Now watch this, watch this. Have you ever lost something valuable? Raise your hand. Have you ever lost it in your own house? Raise your hand. Woo, my wife hates it when I misplace something. Because after I've looked in the obvious spots, Woo, I'm, I'm, look, I'm trying to tell you right now. Amen. All the cushions coming off all the couches. Amen. I'm talking about me. I'm about to pull out every drawer, start turning things. That just, hey, if, if I go out to the car, I think I left it in the car, everything coming out the car. I'm one of those kind of people that she's, she, she how rush to stop me. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Before you tap the whole house, trying to find whatever it is you're looking for, Tell me where you think you had it and I'll look. She's more, you know, she, she's more patient and calm than me. But this woman was searching. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. That search for the coin is always intense. When you lose something valuable, the search is intense. In other words, I don't care if your favorite show is on. You'd be like, I can't watch it right now. If the phone ring, you're going to be on the phone and search at the same time. Hold on, hold on. I hear you, but I'm looking for something. Why? Because that thing that's valuable, you need it. You want it. Now, here she is, sweeping a dirt floor, trying to find this little piece of drachma, this little coin. And her floor is made out of dirt with rushes and leaves. And she's hoping that maybe if I keep the light burning bright, that... 
I'll find my coin once I clean my house. And then, y'all know how that is when you've been looking all day. You're about to give up. She working, she's working, she's tired, she's sweating. She crying because she ain't, she ain't got the money she thought she had. She's going through her, she's going through it. And now all of a sudden here she said, hey, you know what, I'm going to look one more place. One more place. One more place. I'm going to sweep over here. I done swept over here already, but I'm going to sweep over here again. And then a sparkle. Mm-hmm. A flash. Mm-hmm. A glimmer. Mm-hmm. It's like, no. No, I can't even eat. Wait a minute. Woo! What's happening? You don't understand. I, my, my coin. She talking to herself, right? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Woo! My coin. The coin that I had lost. There it is. That's, I can see the sparkle. I, I, I can see it. I can see the, the light reflecting off the coin. She goes over to it. She picks it up. It's the coin. This is my, this is my, yeah. my coin. Yeah, yeah. Whoop. it's my coin. I found my coin. I found. She's happy. I found my coin, and she yelling, and don't nobody know. They hear the noise. They don't know why she's happy. They don't know why she's dancing. They don't know why she's so excited because she ain't called nobody. She just been searching all day. Finally, somebody looking over, and she said, "Well, let me, let me, let me." So she gathers up again. She said. Hold on, hold on. I got to call somebody. So she put out a cell phone. Doo, 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 doo. She said, hey, hey, do you got so-and-so's number? She said, yeah, I got so-and-so's number. Hey, put her on three-way. Then they put that person on three We're going to get everybody. You got some news? Yes. What's the news? Y'all, my coin that was lost. Woo-hoo. Yes, I found it. And they're like, girl, are you serious? Then she tells the story of the crisis she was in. Are you with me? Then she relates to them how she had lost her drachma. And she relates to them how she thought she was never going to get it back. And how she had been searching diligently all day. And then once they were able to relate to her story and realize what coin she was talking about, All of a sudden, they started rejoicing with her, even though it wasn't even their coin. It was her coin. But they all got happy with her because she had recovered that which was lost. She called her friends. She said, rejoice with me. I found it. I found my coin. And then the Bible says that the master said, Likewise, it means just like this, likewise, there is joy in heaven over one sinner that repents. I never knew that he cared that much about one sinner. He cares so much about one lost sinner that he lit the lamp of the light of the world who was his only begotten son, Yahushua, which y'all call Jesus, HaMashiach, Ha, the Messiah, where you get the word Messiah, you all say Christ, Messiah and Christ. Messiah is Hebrew, Christ is Greek. HaMashiach is the light of the world. When the light of the world came into the world, of course, the darkness didn't want to comprehend it, but let me tell you what light does. Light dispels darkness. And then I heard him say, you do know why I'm here. I'm here to seek, didn't he say it? And to what? Save that which was, help me somebody, lost. Wait a minute. You cared so much about a sinner lost Mm -hmm. that you left heaven, Mm -hmm. came down here Mm -hmm. and swept the earth Mm -hmm. until you 
uncovered a sinner. Mm -hmm. I can hear y'all say, you don't understand. First of all, all you see is a sinner. Mm. But what I see is a son. Uh -huh. All you see is a sinner. But what I see, what I see is a child. Yeah. You see a sinner, but I see a saint. Mm -hmm. You see a sinner. You have no idea that that person you think is a sinner and worthless, you don't know that he's my coin. Mm -hmm. He's valuable to me. Mm -hmm. And I say this, we're in some, we're in some crisis times. This is a time of need. And what is the crisis? It's not just economic crisis, but we have a spiritual crisis in this country. Yeah. We cannot stop people from killing their children. Yes. Hmm. That's a crisis. Yes. We cannot seem to get control of the drug problem in our country as a crisis. Mm -hmm. We have more what's called dysfunctional families mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. than we have functional families. That's a crisis. 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 We've got diseases that have no cure. Mm -hmm. right. We have governments that are running without, le without proper leadership. Right. Our homeless population is, is growing by leaps and bounds. There's still child abuse, mm -hmm. animal abuse. Mm -hmm. We've got animal rights versus human rights. Mm -hmm. It's a crisis. Mm -hmm. False religion, false prophets, false doctrine, modern day Pharisees, you know who they are. I'm right and you wrong, it's that crowd. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a crisis time. Stingy people. Mm -hmm. Your pastor's saying, but two kind of people. Mm -hmm. Givers and takers. Lovers and haters. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have. Mm -hmm. We're in a crisis because we've got stingy people. Mm -hmm. Always talking, y'all bless me with wealth. Mm -hmm. But then won't turn a dime of a dollar over to him when it's time to support the kingdom. All right. We've got a sexual evolution. That's what they call it. We are experiencing what's called sexual evolution. Yeah. But it ain't, it ain't really evolution. It's really devolution. Yeah. Come on. In other words, what we're experiencing now ain't nothing new. Mm -hmm. right. We live in a society where we got our Adams and Eves all mixed up. Yes. Yeah. We, we live in a society where children are bringing guns to school instead of books. Yeah. And you wonder, how come there's no hope? Why does it seem like the situation is so bad? I'll tell you why. Because so many of his coins are lost in the house. In other words, so many of his children that would be making a difference if they were used by him are lost in the dirt and in the brush and the rush of the church houses as well as some of our church families all over this country. Oh, they're in the house, but they lost. Oh, they come every Sunday, lost. No use to the master whatsoever, lost. And he needs them in this time of crisis. He needs everybody, he needs his workers. He needs somebody that's going to hold up the bloodstained banner. He needs somebody that's going to shine for him in this dark world. Did you hear him say, you are the light of the world? A city that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. What man lights a candle and then puts it under a clay bowl? Does that make any sense? No, you light the candle, put it on a candlestick so that there will be light in the house. So then let your light so shine before men. They will see your good works. Who? All of us. Not just a preacher, not just a deacon, but every coin in the house is valuable, especially in time of crisis. Yes. 
We need somebody to be soft in this de decaying world. Somebody say, well, Pastor, you don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand how I've fallen. Well, yeah, let me tell you something. I don't need to know all the details, but I do understand falling. Mm -hmm. For all of us have, all come on, help me in there. Anybody in here have not fallen? No. I mean, is there anybody here that got nerve to say, I've always been right, I've never been wrong, I've never been, come on now, all of us have sinned and what? Fallen short of the glory of the Most High Yah. We are his people. We are the gift to his son. We are the drachma. And yet still, we've fallen. Some of us have fallen into all kind of sin. Let me tell you something about sin. My mom used to say this, and it's true. Sin is sin no matter who is in. I don't give from the pulpit to the pew. All of us have fallen at one time or another. The good news of the gospel is not that we sought him, but that he sought us. And I'm so glad that even though I fell to the ground, when I fell to the soil and got covered with the dust and dirt of this world, I was reminded that I was made in the image of Yah. Yeah. I was reminded that I bore his mark. Yeah. I was reminded I was created for his glory. Yeah. And I was reminded that I was not supposed to be down in the dirt. I was supposed to be ruling and reigning as one of his children yeah. in the kingdom. Yeah. But I fell to the ground. I fell to the dirt. I fell in the dust. Covered with dirt in this lost and dark world. But hallelujah, the light of the gospel shine my way. And somehow, some way, grace allowed just a little spark to hit the corner of my coin. So much so that the master reached over and picked me up, wiped me off, and got so happy. He called all the angels in glory and said, rejoice with me. Why? I found him. That's it? Yeah, yeah, I found him. And let me tell you what he told you. Really, some of y'all been found too, Russell. Right? Listen. Where'd you find him? At the casino? Where'd you find him? At the ballpark? Well, where'd you find him? I ain't gonna tell you. Can't tell you. Where'd you find him? Drug house. Where'd you find him? In the gutter. Mm -hmm. Where'd you find him? On the piano at church every Sunday. Uh-huh. Are y'all still in here with me? Yeah. Where'd you find her? Oh, you hang it. That ain't the point. What's the point? They were lost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they're now found. Yeah. Come on. So what we need to do? We got to have some singing. Mm -hmm. We've got to have some dancing, some rejoicing. See, Yah has always been seeking and saving that which is lost. Mm -hmm. What does he use? I told you he uses the gospel. He uses truth. Yeah. He uses the Holy Spirit yeah. as his sweeping agent. And when he got here in the flesh, he swept the whole world for his lost coin. Yeah. He swept the seashore and uncovered Peter, James, and John. Mm -hmm. He swept Samaria and found the woman at the well. Yeah. He swept the tax collector's office and found Matthew, which is called Levi. Uh -huh. He swept the Gadarenes and uncovered a coin who was possessed with devils. Yeah. He swept Bethany and found Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Yeah, and ever since Calvary, he's been sweeping for lost souls. Yeah. Yeah, Even on the cross, he was sweeping yeah. and uncovered a thief. Yeah. Mm. And said unto him, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Yeah. Let me close. He died for us. But he died saving souls. The good news is he's not dead. For death doesn't have the final say. The record is early the first day of the week he was up already. Yeah. With all power in his hands and now he's sending us as his sweeping agents. He's sending us as the light of the world. And, and when I come to Trinity and I realize how important 
this next step in this transition is, I realize that Yah is not through with this church and its ministry, and I look at the people in the pews, I realize, number one, you need to be reminded that you still have the worth that you did when you started this journey. What you need to do is you need to, whoo, you need to let him have you. Well, what happens if just one person hears this sermon and say, I'm the one he was looking for? Well, if it's just one, heaven will rejoice. If it's just one, angels will shout. If it's just one, they'll be singing and dancing. If it's just one, it'll be worth it because you understand one is important. One is something. Zero is nothing. One is something. You can't even get two until you first get one. Yeah. One is important to the most high. So important that if you were the only one to have ever received the message, he would have still left heaven and died on the cross and suffered for you if it was just you. That's how important one is. Well, may I say this? If you're here today and you know of some lost coins, or at least you know about where they are, why don't you go sweeping? Why don't you go talk to them? Tell them. Share with them. You do know our Heavenly Father is reclaiming all his coins. Amen. And I don't care about your life, your situation and circumstance. That's not important. What's important is that you come to him. And if you're here today and you are that lost coin, hallelujah. The God.